there are 195 countries in the world. Well, give or take, depending on how and which you count. And by the year 2027, there will be at least one more, raising the consensus total to 196. This new country will be Bougainville. Bougainville is, today, an island and autonomous region of Papua New Guinea, the country in Oceania near Indonesia and Australia. The autonomous region actually also consists of the main island plus a few other minor ones, including the not so small Buka Island, and in 2019 they held a referendum on whether or not they wanted their independence to become their own country. The yes won with a gigantic 98.31% of the votes, and as a result, the region of Bougainville will become independent by 2027. It's not often that we see a new country arise in the world, and so in this video, I want to try to understand why Bougainville wants to be independent, how it will look like when they are, and what the history of the island and nation is. Bougainville today has around 300,000 people, most of which speak the local language of Tok Pisin, although a multitude of languages exist. Their flag is this one, a depiction of a red and white upe over a black circle surrounded by green and white on top of a blue field. An upe is a traditional headdress worn by men in parts of Bougainville. The main island is 9,300 square kilometers, Buka Island is much smaller at 500 square kilometers, and the rest are even smaller. Although we must take into account that when independent, they will hold their own exclusive economic area in the ocean, and islands usually have very large sea territory under their sovereignty. The estimated size here is around 500 additional square kilometers. Bougainville is the largest island in the Solomon Islands archipelago, but it is separated from the existing country of Solomon Islands. And the reason why it is separated, first as a part of Papua New Guinea, and now soon to be an independent country, has to do with its history. Bougainville was settled by the Austronesian people around three to 4,000 years ago, and the first European contact came only in 1868, when French explorer Louis-Antoine de Bougainville arrived, naming the island after himself. There are reports of other explorers, Dutch and Spanish, citing the island, but this is where the name comes from. His name, in turn, comes from a small commune in the Somme department, a territory in northern France where I assume he was from. A fun fact, there's also a plant named Bougainvillea, also named after the explorer, but it's native to South America, found in Brazil, Peru, and Argentina, named by a botanist who was accompanying the French Navy Admiral during his trip around the world. I wonder if when independence is reached, the name of the country will change to something that better reflects the natives and inhabitants of the island. But despite the fact that the French were the first Europeans to arrive, it did not become a French colony, instead being claimed by the German Empire as a part of their German New Guinea colony. During World War I, Australia occupied German New Guinea, including Bougainville. After the war, when Germany lost all of its colonies, the island became part of the Australian Territory of New Guinea under a League of Nations mandate. This was in 1920. In 1942, during World War II, Japan invaded the island, but Allied forces launched the Bougainville Campaign to regain control of it in 1943. The Bougainville Campaign was actually one of the major series of land and naval battles between the US, Australia, New Zealand, and the Empire of Japan. It lasted a year and a half, up to pretty much the end of the war in 1945, and saw the deployment of over 170,000 Allied soldiers and 65,000 Japanese, sadly with over 20,000 having died altogether. After the war, the territory of New Guinea, including Bougainville, was returned to Australian control. And what was soon to become Papua New Guinea was also under Australian sovereignty after the war. Because of this, and due to the proximity of the two territories, Bougainville was was incorporated into the Australian territory of Papua and New Guinea in 1949. Eventually, in 1975, when Papua New Guinea became an independent country, Bougainville went along with it, sort of a package deal, if you will, continuing under its administration. So essentially, despite perhaps having some cultural proximity, the only reason that Bougainville was a part of Papua New Guinea was just that the two territories happened to be next to each other and happened to be both temporarily ruled by Australia. If events had run 
run their natural course, perhaps they would be part of the Solomon Islands country or would have reached independence much sooner. The reason why they didn't become a part of the Solomon Islands, by the way, is that the northern part of the archipelago was initially a German colony, while the southern part was a British one. But already at the time, the people of Bougainville realized the lack of logic. They were never Papua New Guinea, so why should they now be under the control of this new country? Because of this, after Papuan independence, Bougainville proclaimed its own independence, declaring themselves the Republic of the North Solomons and adopting the flag they have today. The fact it was originally created and adopted by an independence movement leads me to believe it will remain as the country's national flag. However, no other country or international organization recognized it as their own country. Tensions escalated and Papua New Guinea sent a squadron of riot police to the island to restore order, an action seen by the locals as an invasion. But they had no way of fighting it, and so they were forced to settle with Papua New Guinea, accepting their rule in return for increased self-governance powers. Self-governance was, however, not enough for many of the locals, who still didn't agree with the fact they suddenly had to be ruled by another neighboring country. And so, the Bougainville Revolutionary Army was formed in 1988, with the aim of achieving independence. This led to an internal conflict inside the island. On one side was Papua New Guinea, attempting to retain control, with the support of Australia and Indonesia. On the other was this revolutionary army, with the support of the neighboring Solomon Islands and allegedly of Fiji as well. And there was a big reason for Papua New Guinea to not want to give the island up, because under Australian rule in 1930, vast gold and copper reserves were discovered, and a copper mine was created under Australian control. With Papuan independence, the new government was given a 20% stake in the mine. And at the time of this internal revolt, it was the biggest copper mine in the world, representing over 45% of Papua New Guinea's national exports. So you can imagine why they wouldn't want Bougainville independence. They would lose almost half of their country's exports, collapsing its economy. And we can also understand Australian support since the mine was established under an Australian company. It was this mine precisely that started the conflict, with locals protesting the pollution it was creating, the influx of workers from Papua New Guinea and the fact that the gigantic, if not total part of the profits left the island. The BRA entered a military conflict with Papuan forces, but they lost, and almost all of their forces were decimated. In total, over 15,000 people died because of it. A peace treaty was then reached with the aid of New Zealand in 1997, and they continued being ruled by Papua New Guinea. However, a key achievement was made. The peace treaty established that within 20 years, between 2015 and 2020, an independence referendum would have to be held. And that's how we get to today, with the referendum having been held in 2019, independence winning with the majority of votes, and the region now being on track to finally become its own independent country by 2027. It always amazes me how small series of events can have such big consequences. The referendum was heavily participated. Out of 206,000 possible voters, 181,000 showed up to vote, around 87% participation rates. People voting in 2019 likely still remembered the initial struggles for independence and so rushed to the opportunity of finally establishing it. The two options on the ballot were independence or greater autonomy. The first got 98.31% of the votes and the second 1.69%. The referendum was non-binding, and so an agreement with the Papua New Guinea government must be achieved. Papua New Guinea's parliament will then have the ultimate say on whether to ratify Bougainville's independence, and it remains unclear if the 111 members will block it or allow it to pass, although it seems they will enable it. So what will this new country look like? As we saw, it's reasonably sized, with a likely large economic exclusive zone at sea. It has 300,000 people, most of which are Christian, around 70% percent Roman Catholic due to the Catholic missionaries during colonial times. The majority of the people are of native descent as all others were evacuated during the internal conflicts that the island had. During those conflicts, the island was also blockaded by the Papua New Guinea army. The resulting lack of resources forced the natives to develop large self-sustaining systems, including hydropower, fuel from coconut oil, forest farms, and others. So achieving independence, if they're able to maintain and grow this, it might become one of the world's most 
self-sustainable nations. The copper mining has since stopped, but a reopening could be a solution to provide financing for the new country. Because while official stats about Bougainville's economy are not available, the Papua New Guinea National Research Institute estimates that the region has a per capita GDP of about $1,100, which isn't that low and would put their GDP at around $330 million. However, they make sure to point out that this value relies heavily on money from the central Papuan government. Maybe biased because they probably didn't want to lose the territory, but it's likely that the new country will initially struggle economically without the financial support of Papua New Guinea, unless they can quickly develop their internal economy or secure investments from foreign partners. Although this investment might come at the cost of foreign influence, as Australia, New Zealand, China, and the United States attempt to diplomatically influence the new nation and add it to their sphere of influence. And there is also the risk of internal breakup. Up to this point, locals were united in achieving independence from Papua New Guinea, but apparently the islands are a very ethically and linguistically diverse region, which might lead to internal fractures. On the other hand, achieving independence might set off a wave of self-determination in many of the small oceanic and Pacific islands, which are still under the control of foreign powers, either local neighboring ones or even dating back to European colonialism and US imperialism. So. That is how the world might gain a new country by 2027, Bougainville. Understanding the history of the island and surrounding areas, why it was not independent, and how it has been ruled by many foreign powers for hundreds of years. Finally achieving what it long fought for, independence. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.